Hello, my name is Abigail Hadafi, and I am the Health Program Specialist at the Substance Abuse Prevention and Treatment Agency, or SAPTA, at Nevada's Division of Public and Behavioral Health, or DPBH. Hello, my name is Beverly Brown, and I am the Social Services Chief, too, at Nevada's Division of Child and Family Services, also referred to as DCFS. I am the state lead for the Child Abuse Prevention Treatment Act, commonly as referred to as CAPTA. Thank you for participating in this training, which is intended to assist child welfare, social services, substance use disorder treatment, public health and mental health agencies, hospitals with labor and delivery units, and providers of maternal and child health services to facilitate collaboration in developing, updating, implementing, and monitoring Comprehensive Addiction and Recovery Act CARA plans of care. This training should help you to understand who plays a role in implementing CARA plans of care, as well as the background and best practices for implementing plans of care. I want to first provide you with a little background on relevant CARA federal and state legislation and administrative code. The Child Abuse Prevention and Treatment Act, referred to as CAPTA, is the original federal legislation enacted in 1974, requiring states to develop policies and procedures to address the needs of infants who have been exposed to substances in utero. In 2016, Congress enacted the Comprehensive Addiction and Recovery Act, known as CARA, to address the opioid epidemic. This added requirements for states through CAPTA to focus on the effects of substance use on infants and caregivers. The federal legislation requires health and human services providers to develop a plan and provide treatment services to, treatment, to treat infants born with neonatal abstinence syndrome and their families. CAPTA was further amended in 2018 to authorize grants to states to assist child welfare agencies, social service, social service agencies, hospitals with labor and delivery units, medical staff, public health and mental health agencies, and maternal and child health agencies to facilitate collaboration in developing, updating, implementing, and monitoring plans of care. Nevada Revised Statute 432B-220 requires a person who provides medical services to a newborn infant who is believed to be affected by prenatal substance use or is experiencing withdrawal to notify a child protection agency. Such notification shall not be construed to require prosecution. We will discuss more about the child Pro protective services notification process later in this training. Nevada Administrative Code 449 requires providers who believe an infant has been born affected by prenatal substance use to develop a care plan of care prior to discharge from the medical facility. It is important to note that health providers are not required to diagnose a substance use disorder in order to develop a care plan of care for the infant, birthing person, and or family member. For more information on this, please refer to the May 19th, 2020 Care Reporting Guidance Document, also linked on the Sober Moms Healthy Babies and the DPBH Perinatal Substance Use Treatment Network websites. CAPTA does not define substance abuse or withdrawal symptoms resulting from prenatal drug exposure. This was left to the states to define. DPBH and DCFS, in collaboration with the Nevada Perinatal Health Initiative, developed a definition of an infant affected by substance use, affected by substance abuse or withdrawal symptoms resulting from prenatal drug exposure to provide additional guidance in determining when and for whom a care plan of care is needed in Nevada. The definition is, a parent will be offered a care plan of care when an infant defined as a child less than one year of age has been determined to be affected by a legal or illegal substance and or whose mother has a substance use disorder. According to the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, substance use disorders, substance use disorders occur when the recurrent use of alcohol and or drugs causes clinically and functionally significant impairment, such as health problems, disability, and failure to meet major responsibilities at work, school, or home. The definition of a substance-affected infant in Nevada is an infant whose mother is receiving medication-assisted treatment for a substance use disorder and or is actively engaged in treatment for a substance use disorder, or whose mother is misusing prescription drugs or is using illegal 
or legal drugs and meets criteria for a substance use disorder, but is not actively engaged in a treatment program, or who is experiencing symptoms of withdrawal or is likely to experience symptoms of withdrawal based on chronic, habitual, regular, or recurrent use of a controlled substance by the mother during pregnancy, or who displays the effects of a fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. Next, let's discuss who decides if an infant is affected. A qualified healthcare provider determines if an infant is substance affected using the definition I previously read to guide them in making the determination. This person can be a doctor, nurse, or social worker, but ideally it would be a decision made by a team of these medical professionals that have built trust with the birthing person. The second training will provide a deeper dive into determining when a plan of care is necessary and the screening methods that can be used using examples from members of the Nevada Care Work Group. I want to emphasize that the intent behind a plan of care is to develop a public health approach to identifying and serving families impacted by substance use. In Nevada, this is led by DPBH, which also oversees state-funded treatment services for pregnant people with substance use disorders. DCFS oversees child welfare services at the state level and is the designated child protection agency providing direct services to rural counties. Clark and Washoe counties are the, the two most populous counties in the state, operate as state supervised county administrated child welfare agencies. At the state level, DBPH and DCFS coordinate efforts to facilitate a continuum of services for infants and their families through state funded and other community service providers. It is the responsibility of DPPH to collect care plans of care and monitor implementation. This includes monitoring of public health trends related to infants affected by substance use and their families. DPPH and DCFS have developed a protocol to share information that would allow for preventive prevention services, such as those included in the state's Family First Prevention Services State Plan, to be offered to families who consent to information being shared and for whom a care, pl care plan of care has been completed. This would allow both divisions to collaborate to fulfill the monitoring requirement of CARA and provide services in a non-punitive manner in line with the intent of CAPTA. In June, 2021, the implementation of open beds helped to facilitate connecting families to services by submitting plans of care electronically rather than via fax to DBBH. Submitting plans of care through open beds helps to identify the services that are available and ideally make warm handoffs to providers to ensure the infant and caregiver have the tools they need to access the services they need. DCFS receives reports of infants affected by substances and is required to report this data to the Federal Administration for child, Children and Families. I'm now going to transition to Beverly to provide more information on the intersections with child welfare. The goal of CARA is not to remove children or punish mothers for substance use, but to ensure the child is safe and address the health and substance use disorder treatment needs of both the affected infant and family or caregiver. The CARA plan of care is meant to facilitate communication and coordination among service providers to support the well being of the infant as well as identify services for the caregivers. I want to emphasize that a plan of care is different from a child welfare safety plan. You can think of a plan of care as an information sharing tool for the parent or caregiver to use and is supposed to help bridge the collaboration so that providers are all talking to one another in support of the family. A child welfare safety plan occurs only when the child welfare agency is involved with a family and has identified a threat to a child's safety. Medical providers are required to notify a child welfare agency when an infant is identified as substance affected and must include information about the effects of the prenatal substance exposure to the infant. Sometimes there is confusion among medical providers about notifications and reports to CPS, so I'd like to provide some more background information on this. The reporting system that child welfare agencies use in Nevada do not differentiate between a notification to the child welfare agency and a report of suspected child maltreatment. Because of the way the system is currently set up, a care plan of care is often conflated with a CPS report. 
In Nevada, prenatal substance exposure does not constitute maltreatment. If you would like to learn more about your role as a mandated reporter, there is a training available, which is hyperlinked here. A CPS report allows the Child Welfare Agency to review the information provided and make several determinations. Is there an allegation of child maltreatment and is an investigation required? If not, would this family benefit from services provided by the agency or other community providers? CPS will determine whether child protection is needed based on assessment of multiple factors, including immediate safety concerns, the birthing person's attentiveness to the infant in the hospital setting, mental health history, birthing person's participation in substance use treatment, prior CPS reports on the family, ability to meet the infant's basic medical and developmental needs, support systems, and willingness to engage in services that address the well being and safety of the infant. CPS will determine the type of response that is appropriate. This could include no response and the report is screened as information only. The CPS agency refers the family to voluntary services without opening an investigation, or the CPS agency determines an investigation is required and it assigns the report to a caseworker. I am now going to turn it back over to Abigail who will be reviewing the CARA flowchart. I am now going to review a flowchart that was drafted in consultation with the Nevada Perinatal Health Initiative's CARA workgroup and subject matter experts. The flowchart is intended to depict the processes for developing a care plan of care for infants who are affected by substance use and their caregivers to help facilitate linkage to services and care coordination for those families. You can reference companion documents to the flowchart, such as the CARA fact sheet for healthcare providers an ex excerpt of NRS 629031, defining healthcare providers in Nevada, and best or recommended practices on the Sober Moms Healthy Babies page and the DPBH Perinatal Substance Use Treatment Network webpage. Beverly and I are going to review the flowchart with you, starting with the prenatal care part of the flowchart, and then we'll review the process once the baby is born. A brief verbal screen should be conducted every trimester and at delivery. Universal screening using a questionnaire-based tool should not be confused with biologic testing, which historically has been applied inconsistently and can result in a testing system damaged by bias. Please consult the Perinatal Health Initiative's reference guides for more information on screening, which will also be covered in more detail in the second training in the series. For prenatal patients, once ESPERT has been conducted, if the screening is positive, a care plan of care should be offered and the plan should be developed with the pregnant person. I will go into offering a care plan of care in more detail in the following slides. Education on breastfeeding and infant care should be provided. Obtain consents for release of information to support care coordination and warm handoff referral. Submit the care plan of care to DPBH using open beds and provide a copy of the care plan of care part B to the patients, to the parents and or caregivers. Moving on to the next portion of the flowchart, we will now review what to do when a baby is born. In addition to a brief verbal screen every trimester, a brief verbal screen is also recommended to be performed at delivery. Once the baby is born, if the verbal screening is positive, the healthcare provider team members should determine whether the infant is affected by prenatal drug and or alcohol exposure. You will recall the definition of a substance affected infant is an infant whose birthing parent is receiving medication-assisted treatment for a substance use disorder and or is actively engaged in treatment for a substance use disorder, or whose birthing parent is misusing prescription drugs or is using legal or illegal drugs and meets criteria for a substance use disorder, but is not actively engaged in, in a treatment program, or who is experiencing symptoms of withdrawal or is likely to experience symptoms of withdrawal based on chronic, habitual, regular, or recurrent use of a controlled substance by the mother during pregnancy, or who displays the effects of a fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. The flowchart also lists the three populations of birthing people for whom a care plan of care is needed. Number one, someone using legal or illegal drugs on an opioid medication for chronic pain or on medication that can result in a withdrawal syndrome and does not have a substance use disorder. Number two, a person receiving medication-assisted treatment for an opioid use disorder 
or is actively engaged in treatment for a substance use disorder. Number three, a person misusing prescription drugs or is using legal or illegal drugs meets criteria for a substance use disorder and not actively engaged in a treatment program. If the infant doesn't meet the criteria I just discussed, no plan of care is required. If the infant is determined to be affected by substances, please notify the local child welfare agency. Beverly will now briefly describe the next part of the flowchart. If the infant is determined to be affected by a prenatal drug and or alcohol exposure, a notification should be made to the child, local child welfare agency. This will initiate a local child welfare agency screening decision. Abigail will now finish reviewing the rest of the flowchart. The team should offer a care plan of care and develop the plan with the caregiver. Education on breastfeeding and infant care should also be provided. Consents for a release of information to support care co coordination should be obtained. Once that has been completed, the plan of care should be sent to DPBH via open beds. This step will be reviewed in detail in subsequent training. Please make sure you provide a copy of part B of the plan of care to the parents or caregivers so that they have a copy of the recommended services and referral contact information. In addition to listing resources for caregivers and infants, it is important to provide a warm handoff when possible to ensure that the caregiver is connected to someone who can provide what he or she needs. Hospital staff may also want to discuss with the patient how they plan to access services and if there are any barriers to doing so. Referrals for infants should include any services needed to meet their educational, physical, and mental health needs. This may include early intervention services, Part C agencies for screening, assessment, and intervention services, home visiting programs experienced in working with families with substance use disorders, case management, and substance use treatment. If the family has Medicaid, connect them to the managed care organization's care management team, which includes peer navigators. In summary, the intent behind a care plan of care is to develop a public health approach to identifying and serving families impacted by substance use. Nevada has developed a definition of an infant affected by substance use or withdrawal symptoms resulting from prenatal drug exposure to provide additional guidance in determining when and for whom a care plan of care is needed. Additional materials, including a care flowchart, provider fact sheet, reporting guidance, and reference guides for reproductive health complicated by substance use are available on the Sober Moms Healthy Babies website and the DPBH Perinatal Substance Use Treatment Network website, which are linked on the slide. Thank you for your time. This concludes the initial CARA training. If you have questions, please visit the Perinatal Substance Use Treatment Network website for more information.